was trying to do a bit of a funky intro with guitar that I'm learning, but looks like the dog is not going to let me do that. So let's get on with the video. Don't be acting cute now. Okay, so we are looking at RAM today, obviously, by the uh, title of the video. We are specifically looking at 1440p, 16 gig uh, versus 32 gig. Does it make a difference? Um, let's find out. I know there are dozens of videos on this already, uh, but probably more of them are based on 1080p. I wanted to really focus on the 1440p. And also, having said that, every setup that you get, every different bit of hardware, um, even sometimes connection through internet and things like that are going to vary. So I wanted to test it in my own setup, which brings me into explaining what my setup is. If you haven't seen the videos before or follow my Instagram, I am running the uh, Gigabyte 3070 uh, NVIDIA card, and I'm also running Intel i9 uh, Gen 10, that's the 10 uh, 850K. So what we are looking at and uh, is obviously the RAM, and I have gone with a brand uh, that is relatively cheap for reasonably good performance. So it's not the highest high-end RAM, the XLR8 gaming brand, um, but it is pretty good uh, running at uh, 3200 megahertz and the timings of a CL16. So I'm not gonna go into the details about speed and timings and things like that. Um, that's for another video, someone that can explain it a lot better than me. Uh, but having said that, we already had the 16 gig in the machine. I've got some benchmarks to show uh, once we get into that. That's how it looks. Obviously, you, this is a, an RGB version of RAM, so it's very easy to see that it's running. You also want to check your system settings or check uh, CPUZ if you have that program. I highly recommend it to look and make sure the RAM is running at the right speed. You might need to go into your BIOS and update your um, extreme profile to make sure you have extreme RAM running basically to make sure it's running at the, the correct speed. Otherwise, it's going to default to a lower speed. There's the three benchmarks that we're running. So how, how quickly can we get into game or turn the PC on? frames per second, and then also RAM usage. So they are our three benchmarks that we're looking at between 16 and 32 gig. So first off, we'll look at uh, how quickly can you turn on the PC. And I haven't got anything to demonstrate this, but I can tell you for 16 gig, it was about 40 seconds. And for 32 gig, it was actually a lot faster at 34 seconds. And this is to get to your uh, desktop and have your um, background apps preloaded. I only have a few, so I have Razer, I have um, NVIDIA software, I have uh, Dragon Center and Windows Security. Outside of that, I don't have anything else. So not a lot going on, um, but you still save quite a bit of time, six seconds in fact, with 32 gig upgrade. So we're gonna move on to some gameplay here and I'm gonna flash up the results, how quickly it took to get into game at 16 gig. I'm gonna stick with 16 and then I'm gonna show you the 32 after. So 16 gig, we've got a uh, long time to get into Red Dead 2 here. And what it has to do is, obviously, this is going through Steam. And then we have to go through the Rockstar launcher, which is all automatic. We have to then wait for the logos to load, get to the main menu, and then click on Story, wait for the loading. And then, then that was it, as soon as I could move my character. So uh, it did take a long time, but that is traditional with Rockstar games, really. So 1 minute 40 seconds for 16 gig. Now frames per second in terms of the performance, we've got the capture here running and you can see it, it varies all over the place. We're in Saint Denis, which is a, a big population, lots of buildings, lots going on, lighting. So um, a, a difficult place to benchmark. But we've got the capture here. I'm saying this is around about 78 frames per second. Interestingly enough, if we weren't capturing, it was a lot higher up to about 90 frames per second. RAM usage. We've got, uh, as you can see here on the capture, about 11.5 gig there. Um, interestingly enough, without the capture, uh, or probably uh, as predicted, without the capture, it's lower at 11.38, 11.38 gigabytes. So quite interesting, uh, but how does that compare to 32? Well, I can tell you, strangely enough, that it took a lot longer to load into game and to be able to move my character at one minute 45 seconds. I think this is due to Rockstar servers and having to uh, authorize or, or uh, approve your account before you get into game. Uh, also, there's the human error of how quickly I can click on, on play story mode. So uh, 1 minute 45 is obviously 5 seconds longer. Uh, but gameplay wise, 
it's uh, quite interesting here. We are running uh, capped again. It's all over the place, but I'm saying that this is about, on average, 85 frames per second, so much higher than, than 16 gig. And uh, But, interestingly enough, when we are not capturing, it's still about 90, which is uh, the same. So 16 gig or 32 gig, you're about the same if you're not capturing uh, at 90 frames per second with this. Uh, RAM usage, however, has jumped up right up. If you're capturing, you can see here it's 12.9 gig, so almost 13 gig of usage here. And uh, if you're not capturing, it's still a jump up, but lower, 11.9 uh, gig. So very interesting here. Now we're going to move on to the next game, and this is GTA 5. Again, we've got 16 gig uh, benchmark running now. So in order to get into game, again, you have to go through the Rockstar uh, launcher, through Steam, and then get uh, through the menus before you can move your character. And that took 1 minute 30 seconds, almost 1 minute 31 seconds uh, at 16 gig. In terms of frames per second, it was kind of all over the place. And again, I should have mentioned this before, we're running all these games at maximum, uh, uh, absolute maximum settings that we can. And um, with GTA 5 here, you can see the, the capture is kind of all over the place. I'm going to call this uh, uh, 120 frames per second as an average with the capture on. With the capture off, it was slightly higher. I, I'd say about 125 frames per second. Again, a massive open world. It's going to vary. What about RAM usage then? So here you can see we're about 9 gigs um, whilst we're capturing and only slightly less than that whilst it wasn't capturing at 8.9 gig. So 32 gig, how does that fare? Well actually it was a lot quicker to get into game. Um, so again there's online and human error to 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 account for that. Uh, but 1 minute third, uh, one minute 23 actually, so quite a bit faster at 32 gig. But frames per second, what was that? Well, it was, it was, it, it, well, you can see here, it is a bit better. Again, it does vary all over the place, but between 120 and 140 is the average here, uh, where previously it was only 120. Um, and then when we're not capturing, it is, uh, again, quite uh, all over the place, slightly better, I would say, uh, upwards of 120 to 145. So only a little bit better when you're not capturing. In terms of the RAM usage, uh, not a huge difference here, but uh, well, uh, still actually a big bit, bit, bit uh, about a, a gigabyte higher, so 10.3, and uh, that's when it's capturing, and then when it's not capturing, it's uh, again about a gig higher at 9.8 uh, gigs usage. So quite interesting results so far. We're going to now look at Call of Duty, um, Cold War first, and then Warzone after. This is going through the Battle Net. Um, application to to log in and again we're, we're we're looking at just the campaign here with uh, Cold War so it's as soon as you can get into game uh, through the through the launcher and into game uh, here it took about 48 seconds to get into the game at 16 gig of course we're going with first and then when we are capturing you see the frames per second all over the place between 125 uh, 135 I'm gonna average that out to about 130 when capturing when when not capturing I'm gonna say it's a, a little bit higher it was about 135 to 140 frames per second RAM usage then at 16 gig we're looking at here uh, about 12.7 gig whilst it's capturing and slight only very slightly less about 12.5 gig when it's not capturing over to the 32 gigabytes uh, of RAM and we had actually pretty much bang on the same load time to get into game, 47 seconds, so a second faster. How about performance then? Well, it, you can see it here, it's pretty much the same to be honest with you. We're running, running campaign in the exact same area, um, you're getting almost the exact same frames there whilst capturing. Uh, I will say uh, that when we weren't capturing, it was slightly higher, about 137 frames per second. But So, you know, within margin of error there, you're not going to be able to really tell that. And, uh, you know, different explosions somewhere, uh, an enemy dying in a different fashion, that's going to account for that. RAM usage, um, surprisingly, was actually quite a lot higher. Considering we're getting the same performance, we're looking at quite a, a bit higher RAM usage at 13.3 gigs uh, RAM whilst capturing, and then 13.6 to 13.3 when not capturing. So quite interesting results there for that. Moving over to uh, Warzone then, and we're just jumping straight into a game of of solo uh, Warzone. 
uh, again through the same uh, Battle.net browser. So time to load in and get to the game. This is actually just to get to the main menu, so not into the actual game. Uh, that took 49 seconds with 16 gig of RAM. Frames per second. Again, this is a huge open open area with latency to uh, um, account for as well. But we're getting a capture here of about 150, depending on where we are. Down to 130 sometimes, up to 165 sometimes. I'm going to benchmark that as a, a 150 while capturing, and it was higher when I wasn't capturing, but only about five to six frames per second. What about RAM usage? So RAM usage here, whilst capturing, we're looking at about 13.8, 13.9 gigabytes. Um, and whilst I wasn't capturing, it was of course slightly slower, uh, lower rather, at 13.64, uh, 13.65. Well, about 32 gigs then, um, so moving over, we have a much faster time to get to that menu, uh, 40 seconds, so saving 9 seconds there. Uh, frames per second wasn't much different whilst capturing, uh, again around about 50 frames per second, 55 down to 45. Uh, I will say it was a bit more constant, there's not so many highs and lows, it was more constant, but again it depends where you are in the map. But I will say whilst you weren't capturing, it was actually a lot higher about 160 frames per second. And RAM usage then, well it did jump up quite a bit actually. We're looking at about 14.6 whilst capturing and 14.1 whilst I wasn't capturing. So interesting considering the performance wasn't that, that, that much greater. And one more game we're gonna look at here. It's a bit of an older game, but I wanted to put something through the Epic Games launcher to see if there were any, any uh, differences with that in terms of performance. And we're playing uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Great game I've, I've only recently just started. And uh, 16 gig again, all the settings are set to high. Draw distance is slightly uh, off the highest setting, but everything else is maxed out. And time to turn on at 16 gig took 39 seconds. And whilst we were capturing frames per second, again, it depends where you are, but I'd say that this is about 107. And we, we've got a, a, a big open field here, lots of trees in the background, a uh, castle off in the distance, uh, lots of grass and, and uh, flowers and things to, to deal with. And I'd say 107 frames per second here, as I said, as capturing. It was higher when I wasn't capturing at about 115. In terms of RAM usage, where you can see the capture here, 7.8 gig. Whilst I wasn't capturing, it was slightly lower, but only a little bit at 7.5. How about 32 gigs then? Well, it's a similar story to some of the others. Um, it was pretty much the same time to turn on and get into game at 38 seconds. And then in terms of uh, frames per second, where you can see here in the exact same area, it is running slightly higher. Uh, I'd say this is a few frames per second higher. But more importantly, it is actually a bit more constant and you're getting a lot less dips, uh, which is, is really important. And whilst I wasn't capturing, it was again about the same as previous, 115 frames per second. RAM usage was interesting. Again, we've jumped up about half a gig here. So we're at 8.2 gigs whilst capturing and about 7.9 gigs whilst I wasn't capturing. So there we go. How do I sum that up? And I have tried to, to run through those results as quickly as possible. Hopefully I've made it as clear as possible as well for you. In terms of my final thoughts, it is, it is interesting. It didn't really make a difference. This cost 80 gig. This, uh, this cost 80 pounds. This uh, upgrade of uh, to uh, an additional 16 gig of RAM. Um, and I wouldn't really say it's worth it for the average gamer. The only time you're really going to benefit from it is if you're doing a lot of streaming or video making and you're recording a lot of things. Or if you're just uh, a bit messy and you, you want to have a load of tabs running in the background for some reason rather than closing them down. Or if you want to be uh, downloading stuff in the background, perhaps new games, uh, different games. Or, or maybe you're running a second monitor and you're watching YouTube or streaming music or something. That's when it's going to gonna help. Uh, it's not going to improve performance, but it's going to make sure you don't dip any performance. Because... If you were running a lot of other apps in the background whilst running at 16 gig, you are going to take a performance hit. However, at 32, you're more likely not. And that is uh, that is proven by running the the uh, the capture software there uh, through NVIDIA. So hopefully that has been beneficial to you. Uh, again, I will reiterate that it's probably not an upgrade that everyone should make. And if you're looking at making a new build, I'd certainly recommend you stick with 16 as a starter and see if you want to upgrade down the road. 
Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you took something from it and I will catch you next time. Thank you.